Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Zach Wild. This is your brother, Kasapo. We hope everybody's been enjoying the festivities and the feast that we had. And we had the feast of New Moon, and then we also had the feast of dedication. We hope everybody got to enjoy it with their loved ones and that everybody enjoyed the feast. Um, we are going to go into a lesson today. We're going into overcoming the spirit of anxiety. So if anyone struggles or battles with this particular spirit, we pray and we hope Elohim that this helps you in your journey and in your walk. Um, before we get started, let's understand what anxiety is. Um, Brother Kasper, can you mind reading a couple of definitions for us? Sure. Intense, excessive, and persistent worry and fear about everyday situations. Fast heart rate, rapid breathing, sweating, and feeling tired may occur. Also, a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. Another definition, desire to do something, typically accompanied by unease. Another definition, a nervous disorder characterized by a state of excessive uneasiness and apprehension typically with compulsive behavior and panic attacks. Uh, compulsive behavior or panic attacks. So oh, it sorry. Be either or. It's okay. It could be either or. Uh, now, these characteristics can accumulate in life experiences or a person that is used to being alone and doesn't have much social interaction along with other rare instances. So this anxiety can come in all shapes and forms. You just don't really know where it's really coming from um, as pertains to different people because it's, it's just so broad it can come upon you in any different instances all right now brothers and sisters in the faith need to have temperance or self-control to be examples unto others showing our faith to those that are without all right can we read Sirach chapter 4 and verse 30 to see what the scriptures actually say about operating in anxiety. Sirach chapter 4, verse 30. Be not as a lion in thy house, nor frantic among thy servants. All right. So we're supposed to be an example. We're not supposed to be operating how everyone else is operating. And we're not supposed to be operating like that in the first place. Anybody who's operating in anxiety, it's something that you have to overcome. Okay. Um, can you give me the definition for frantic, please, Brother Carson? Sure. Frantic as an adjective, wild or distraught with fear, anxiety, or other emotion. All right. So it's not just fear that triggers anxiety. There's other emotions as well. And these other emotions include worry, they include doubt, they include sadness, and they include anger. And it can go on from there, right? So it's just the emotions or the feelings that actually trigger the anxiety. And I want you all to remember that because when we get closer to the end of the lesson, it's going to make more sense. Brother Casa, can we go to Ecclesiastes uh, 7 and 8? Sure. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. All right. So this is for encouragement. It may be hard to start working against anxiety, but the end results are going to be worth it. So a person with anxiety, you already have the odds against you because you're going into working on something new. You're trying to overcome anxiety, which overcoming anxiety gives you anxiety in itself. So you have to know that you're doing it with a purpose for the end, that the end is gonna be better than the beginning. It may be hard to be in it, but at the end, it's gonna be worth it. Right? Can you continue reading, Brother Casa? Yes. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Right. We have to gain patience with ourselves and with others. Understanding that everyone is different and everyone has their own struggles. But don't be the proud person that doesn't want to change. 
okay? You have to put forth that effort and really want to change to be able to change, all right? Uh, can you continue to declare Ecclesiastes 7 and 9? Brother Carson, please. Sure. Verse 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. All right. So it says, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. Brother Kazakh, can you read me the definition of hasty, please? Hasty, H926. A primitive root to tremble inwardly or palpitate. That is figuratively, be alarmed, make alarmed or suddenly alarmed or agitated. Uh -huh. By implication, to hasten anxiously. Be or make a fright. Be afraid. Be amazed. Be dismayed. Be rash. Make haste. Be hasty. Hastily. Give speedy. Thrust out trouble. Vex. All right. So the first one I want to touch on, I said, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. Right, the first one was to tremble inwardly. So you know what happens when you get angry, you start shaking, right? That's one of the first implications of being hasty or a sign of anxiety, okay? It says to be alarmed or agitated. So if you're easily alarmed, that means that you're fearful and that fear leadeth you to anxiety or to be agitated. If you're quickly agitated, the agitation leadeth to anxiety. You see how there's so many paths to get to anxiety. All right, so you have to be, this is one of those spirits that you actually have to be on guard against in every aspect of your life if you battle from it, because it tries to attack you from so many different directions, okay? By implication to hasten anxiously, so the hastiness in spirit causes you to be anxious as well because you're moving very speedily. You don't slow down. And because you don't slow down, and because you don't slow down, the anxiety is able to overtake you. Because if somebody is moving very slowly and very cautiously, they're not hasty. They're not anxious. They're not frantic. So these are the things that we actually have to work on. It's actually being slow, slow to speak, slow to listen, slow to move, slow in our actions. And slowing down will actually allow us to overcome the hastiness and the franticness, right? And even in our thoughts, this goes to our actions, this goes to our thoughts, this goes to our spirit, we have to slow down everything. We can't be alarmed every time something happens. We have to be trusting in Allah and waiting for him to, to show us what to do and not thinking about what we can do, all the different things that we can do, being very, very quick in our thoughts and quick in our actions. We actually have to operate in understanding, not being agitated with everybody, Everybody has their own thing going on. You have to have understanding and compassion toward others. And that's what helps you also to overcome the anxiousness. Now, when a person is being attacked by the spirit of anxiety, right? That anxiety also plays in other parts of their life that they may not even recognize. Okay, Brother Carson, can we read Sirach chapter 4, verse 29? Sure. Sirach chapter 4, verse 29. Be not hasty in thy tongue and in thy deeds, slack and remiss. Now, this is a great example because a person that operates in that anxiety, they're going to say things quickly without thinking. So that anxiety actually is playing against you in a lot of senses. Be not hasty in thy tongue. So you speak very, very fast. You don't think about what you're going to say because that haste, that anxiety, that trembling inward, that palpitation, Right, you're alarmed, you're agitated. And because of those things, you feel like you're justified to move quickly. 
when it's all against you. It's all playing against you. All right. So you'll be hasty to say something. But then when it's time for you to actually do, in some cases, when it's time for you to actually do what you have spoken, you're slow to doing it. Because you didn't really think it through. You were anxious. You were hasty. And now you're slow because you're like, ah, uh, did I really want to do that? Did I really mean to say that? Whether it be that you've said something and hurt somebody's feelings, whether it be that you said something and agreed to do something that you didn't really want to do, it all plays off of the same spirit. Brother, can we, um, can we also read Sirach 4 and 31, please? Yeah, sure. Let not thine hand be stretched out to receive and shut when thou shouldest repay. Right. So in some cases, you may be hasty or, or you might get anxious and say, okay, if somebody's giving you something, you might take it. Like, okay, thank you. But then not really understanding the whole situation that you may have to give something back or you may have to give something for what you've gotten. So you have to be very, very careful with that hastiness or that anxiety because it, a lot of times that anxiety and that hastiness and that franticness actually gets you in the situations that if you were actually slow to it, you wouldn't have been in the situation in the first place because you would have sat there and you would have been able to see the whole situation and not just one part that got you in your feelings or that one part that stirred your emotions. So we really have to slow down with this spirit. This spirit, you have to be slow in all aspects of your life. You have to start working on patience, right? You have to start working on, as we're about to get into, moderation, right? Now, we're reading these because the spirit of haste plays in all aspects of a person that operates in the spirit of anxiety. So it will show itself in different areas of your life that you may not recognize, right? Just like we said before. Um, can we read Philippians chapter 4, verse 5, please? Yes. Philippians 4 and 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. All right. Let your moderation be known unto all men. All right. Now, what is moderation, Brother Casapo? Can you read the definition? Sure. Moderation. The noun. The avoidance of excess or extremes, especially in one's behavior or political opinions. Right. So this is how we allow our moderation to be known unto all men, right? Because moderation is the avoidance of excess or extremes, right? So there's two different extremes, right? So you actually have to know your limits. And this is a part of understanding. You have to know your limits of how far you can go into sadness or how far you can go into happiness, right? Because these are the two drastic emotions, okay? Also, any emotion, just like anger, it says be slow to anger, okay? So if something happens, don't be quickly angered, but be slow to it. Like, okay, let me find out what happened. It's okay. You're going to get angry sometimes but you can't operate in that anger. You have to be slow to it. Like, okay, I don't want to just be angry or I don't just want to be fearful. No, okay? So in the two realms of extremities, we're going to deal with sadness and happiness, okay? So you have to understand how far you can go into sadness. Say you're dealing with somebody and they're very sad. Now you have to have your limit of how far you can go into sadness where you don't go into a downward spiral. Or you have to have your limit of how far you can go into happiness where you don't go into a downward spiral because happiness can take you into a downward spiral too, an excess of it or extremity of it, right? So you have to be very self-aware of yourself, okay? So that you can operate in moderation. That is what moderation is. Is having an understanding of how far you can go in any direction for you to still operate in a righteous manner. Okay. So 
along with that, being content helps us overcome anxiety as well. All right. Because later we're going to see the power of envy over anxiety. Okay. Um, Brother Costa, can we read Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, please? Sure. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's right. So let your conversation be without covetousness. And that word conversation actually means manner of life. Okay. It's not just about the words that are coming out of your mouth. It's about your deeds, your actions, your manner of life, the way you carry yourself. Let your manner of life or your conversation be without covetousness. So don't always be looking for a gain. If you actually start doing things from your heart and not only what you're going to get from it, you'll actually start moving away from anxiety. Okay? I know there's a lot of different things we're covering because anxiety plays in so many different areas that we have to cover so many things. So you guys should bear with us. Um, and being content with such things as you have, whatever you have, be content with it, be happy with it, and, and, and cherish it. Because by doing that, it allows you not to be thinking about more things than you actually need to be thinking about. If you actually focus on the things that Elohim has given you, because he gave you those things, because he won't overbear you. He'll give you right what you need for where you are in your season or whatever part of your life you're at. And you have to cherish those things. You have to focus on building with what you have. You can't worry about what the next man is using, what materials he has to build. You have to be worried about what you have to build with. Okay, if you start doing that and you start worrying about the things that you have, you'll be better off and you'll become stronger in the things that you have. And you'll start building the things that you have where you will focus on the things that you have and focus on yourself instead of focusing on what's going on around you because that leads to anxiety. Envy leads to anxiety. Um, and you also have to know that Elohim would never leave you nor forsake you. Now that faith, you gotta go into the faith lesson, but that faith also is a big part of anxiety because it's actually that doubt or that lack of faith that actually causes people to go into anxiety in itself. So you have to put on faith. If you need to go and check out that lesson, please go and check it out. Um, we, we have a whole playlist for, for faith and the um, overcoming the other spirits and growing in the other spirits, the good spirits. Um, Brother Casa, can we read uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6? And we're going to read verses 6 through 8, please. Sure. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. But holiness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. All right. So according to scripture, if you have food and if you have raiment, you're supposed to be okay. Anything else is a bonus, okay? So if you have that mindset that, yo, I got food, I got clothes, I'm happy. And you're not worried or troubled about anything else. Ahaya be with you. Alahaya be with you. Because being in that place being in that lowly mindset helps you get away from anxiety because you're not worried about all the worldly matters, all the trivial matters of this world. And you're actually growing in faith, growing in the fruits of the spirit. Brother Costa, uh, can we read Philippians chapter four, verse six, please? This is gonna help us to overcome that anxiety because Yache, our dono, gave understanding so that we can understand how 
we're supposed to operate so that we're not operating in that anxiety. All right, Philippians 4 and 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto Allah. I am. So be careful for nothing. I know it sounds weird, right? Biblical talk. <laughs> but if we actually read the definition of be careful, it'll make more sense, right? Brother Kaza, can you read the definition for be careful, please? Sure. G3309. To be anxious about. Be careful. Have care. Take thought. Right. So now you can understand exactly what it's saying. It's saying be anxious for nothing or take thought for nothing. Right. But what are we supposed to do? In everything by prayer and supplication. So instead of being anxious and taking thought and worrying about something, we're supposed to pray about it. We're supposed to make supplication. We're supposed to make a request. Supplication is a, a petition or a prayer or a request, right? So we're supposed to make a prayer. We're supposed to make supplication with thanksgiving, which means gratitude or thankfulness. Let your request be made known to Allah. But whatever it is that's going on, whatever situation is happening, you're supposed to pray about it. You're supposed to make your supplication about what it is that you need or what understanding you need for your own comfort of heart. And then you do it thankfully with gratitude and you make that request known unto Allah. And you don't continue to take thought about it you let it go and wait for Allah to answer. That will help you overcome that worriness or the anxiety or the franticness over things that you cannot control. Okay? Now, if we hold fast to do these things, what results will we achieve? If we hold fast to do what he just instructed us to do, what are we going to achieve? Can you continue to read in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, Brother Kassam? Sure. Verse 7. And the peace of Allah which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Yache. Right. And the peace, we're going to gain peace. The peace of Allah which passeth all understanding. So you're going to actually gain understanding as well, because that peace is understanding. Right? It's going to keep your hearts and your mind through Yache Christ. So it's actually through Yache. You actually have to have that faith in Yache for these things to happen. <laughs> Can we continue in Philippians 4 and 8, Brother Gus? Yeah, sure. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Yes. These are the things that we have to keep our mind on and our hearts, that we may be good people in truth and true examples of believers. These are the things that we have to continue to keep our mind on. If we worry about these things, we're going to be well off. See, the problem with anxiety is that a lot of times you're anxious about worldly matters or trivial matters instead of worrying about the, the holy things, the righteous things. If we actually put forth that effort to actually shifting and actually worrying about good things, about being a good person, right? About things that are honest, Things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are of a good report. We will actually start moving away from that anxiety because that anxiety is triggered from things that are non-important. And when I say non-important, things that you cannot control and things that you can't take with you. Right? 
because just like it said, being content, you come in the world with nothing, you leave in the world with nothing. According to the flesh, according to tangible things or situations, all these things that are gonna pass anyway, right? But let's think upon the things that are gonna last forever. Let's think upon the things that we can take with us because if we grow into this person of goodness and truth and love, then we're gonna always be able to take that with us. That's gonna follow us. It's gonna grow with us, it's gonna grow in us. So we, we really have to switch our mindset to the things that are actually profitable for us. All right. Um, can we continue to Philippians chapter four, verse nine, Brother Costa? Sure. Verse nine, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the Lahayim of peace shall be with you. Let us be an example for one another. All right. We need that. We need more examples. We need more people operate in this way to help others, all right? Now, the things we worry about or take to heart, what are we supposed to do instead of going in that direction? Uh, Brother Kassel, can we read Matthew 6, verse 25 to 27, please? Sure. Matthew 6 and 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, or yet for your body, what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? All right, so we don't have the power to change anything. So why are we worrying about it? Our anxiety only hinders us and doesn't prosper us. Can you continue reading in uh, Matthew 6 and 28 through 34, Brother Casa, please? Sure. Verse 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore? If Allah am so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Take therefore no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Allah and his righteousness, that all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. All right. Take no thought for tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. We're focused on today. Because tomorrow is going to take thought for the things of itself. Everything that's going to happen tomorrow is going to happen regardless. All right? So why worry about it? Sufficient today. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. The things that's going on today is sufficient enough. Let's worry about today. Focus on the things that you can focus on and the things that are too big for you. Pray and make your supplication and your request known or your petition known with thanksgiving unto Allah and cast it upon him. Let him take care of it. Let him deal with it. We have to be able to let things go and not try to always have control. That anxiety comes from trying to control everything and not letting go. This is why you can't be content. This is why you're walking in fear. This is why you're worrisome. This is why all these things are coming upon you. It's because you don't want to let go. You want to control. You want to have control over everything. And you can't. It's not made for man to control everything. 
We have to let things go and allow Elohim to do what he's going to do. We have to have faith in him. We have to grow in that faith. Okay. So we have to be full of faith so the forces and spirits that are at war against us cannot overcome us. So what other things help us to overcome anxiety? And the many reasons a person may fall into anxiety in the spirit thereof. Can we read the Testament of Simeon, chapter 4, verse 7, please? Sure. And do ye also, my children, love each one his brother with a good heart, and the spirit of envy will withdraw from you. For this maketh savage the soul, and destroyeth the body. It causeth anger and war in the mind, and stir it up unto deeds of blood, and leadeth the mind into frenzy, and suffereth not prudence to act in men. Moreover, it taketh away sleep, and causeth tumult to the soul, and trembling to the body. For even in sleep some malicious jealousy deluded him, gnaweth, and with wicked spirits disturbeth his soul, and causeth the body to be troubled, and waketh the mind from sleep and confusion. And as a wicked and poisonous spirit, so appeareth it to men. All right. There's certain things I want to touch on here, right? So specifically, we're talking about the spirit of envy. Now, this spirit we're going to get into later because the spirit is the spirit, right? So the spirit of envy, it maketh savage the soul and destroyeth the body. Right? It causes anger. It causes war in the mind. So that's why your mind is always going back and forth. And stir up deeds of blood. So that same, the same anxiety or that or that envy or that worrisomeness, you can't let things go. It's gonna continue to play over and over and over into your mind. And that's why it leads the mind into a frenzy, right? And suffer if not prudence to act in men. So you can't operate as a person that's self-controlled. You go into a frenzy, right? Moreover, it taketh away sleep. So because of that mind racing, you can't sleep because you can't let anything go. So you, you, can, you can see how all of these things are just playing against each other. And there's nothing good about it. There's no pros here. This is all cons, okay? It taketh away sleep, right? It causes to molt to the soul and tremble into the body, just like we read earlier about that being angry, how it causes your, your body to shake, right? But even in sleep, some malicious jealousy deluding him, gnawing and with wicked spirits disturbing his soul. So you see, you're just constantly getting attacked, constantly getting attacked by this evil spirit, right? And the crazy thing about anxiety is it attacks your mind. And that is one of the major things that we're going to get into at the end of this lesson is how anxiety attacks your mind. Because once we actually identify the spirit of anxiety, it's going to make so much sense when we actually get to learn of the spirit. Okay. Um, Brother Kassel, can we also read uh, the Testament of Gad, chapter 7, verse 1 through 3? Um, we're going to continue to learn the different ways that anxiety is playing against us. Go ahead. Testament of Gad, chapter 7, verse 1. If a man prospers more than you, do not be vexed, but pray also for him that he may have perfect prosperity, for so it is expedient for you. And if he be further exalted, be not envious of him, remembering that all flesh shall die. And offer praise to Allah who giveth things good and profitable to all men. Seek out the judgments of the Lord, and thy mind shall rest and be at peace. All right. All right. So here we go again with envy, right? If a man prosper more than you, don't be vexed. Don't let don't let that envy or that anxiety get the best of you and cause you to go off and cause you to start having that war in your mind, right? But pray also for him. Remember when we ran the Philippians, when they talked about make your prayer and make your supplication known with thanksgiving? 
you have to pray for that person as well, the person that you're actually having an envy against. See that everything goes back to prayer. If you're actually paying attention, it goes back to prayer and faith as we're gonna continue to see right here, right? The spirit, here it goes at the very end, right? It says, but pray also for him that he may have perfect prosperity, right? And also it says, seek out the judgments of the Lord and thy mind will rest and be at peace. Seeking the judgments of the Lord, seeking how he expects us to operate how he expects us to think and how he expects us to treat one another actually helps us to be at peace and give our mind rest. And if somebody is battling with anxiety, they're constantly looking for peace. They're constantly looking for rest. So if that's what you're looking for, if you're constantly looking for that ease of mind, then look no further. It's right here. You just have to to listen you have to take it and actually have to do it okay let's not be slack on our words but let's put forth the effort so that we can overcome these spirits that are against us um can we read the uh, testament of gad and we're going to jump over to chapter 4 verse 5 please and we're also going to read verse 7 sure verse 5 for hatred worketh with envy also against them that prosper. So long as it heareth of or seeth their success, it always languisheth. Verse 7. For the spirit of hatred worketh together with Satan through hastiness of spirit in all things unto men's death. But the spirit of love worketh together with the law of Allah in long suffering unto the salvation of men. Now, from everything that we went over so far, you should be able to start connecting some dots now, okay? Because things are starting to come together, right? It says, for hatred worketh with envy, right? Remember hatred was one of the things that causes people to go into anxiety. So now you have envy and now you have hatred working together, right? Okay, against them that prosper so long as they're here for see if they're success. It also languages. So it says, for the spirit of hatred worketh together with Satan. So you see where we're going here. Through hastiness of spirit, we have another one joining. So now we have envy, hatred, hastiness, all working together, right? So you can see the compile, how everything is being compiled. All these different spirits are coming together and working as one, okay? Follow me. And in all things to men's death, right? So all these spirits are working to destroy you, okay? But the spirit of love worketh together with the law of Allah So to overcome that, that hatred or that anger, you have to actually start walking in love. You actually have to start loving people. You actually have to start having that empathy towards people. And you can't be mad about what things people are doing all the time. You have to, to wink at their ignorance. You actually have to have that compassion and that mercy to see that everybody is struggling. Everybody is different. Everybody has a different struggle. And you have to be able to understand that and not take things personally to get into your feelings about it. Because as soon as you get into your feelings, all these spirits are coming after you. We're going to get there. We're going to show you exactly how that happens. Um, but that love and the law of Allah, so you actually have to know the law and keep it. This is one of the things we're, we're working here. And long suffering unto the salvation of men. So that, that love and the law is going to bring you to salvation. Uh, can we jump into the Testament of Naphtali, chapter 3, verse 1, please, Brother Cuff? Sure, sure. Naphtali 3 and 1. 
Be ye therefore not eager to corrupt your doings through covetousness or with vain words to beguile your souls. Because if you keep silence and purity of heart, you shall understand how to hold fast the will of Allah and to cast away the will of Belier. Now, the reason we're reading this scripture right here, okay, is one, because it says, be ye therefore not eager to corrupt your doings, right? So that eager is the hastiness. So don't be quick to do something, okay? Just like we've been talking about before. Don't be quick to do something through covetousness, through gain, okay? Because there's a reason, or with vain words to beguile your souls. So don't be quick to say something, to get what you want, and be careful with other people that say things just to get what they want from you, okay? Be slow. And this is exactly why we're going into this. It says, because if ye keep silence and purity of heart, so have a good intention and sit there and be silent, be quiet. You don't have to give an answer quickly. You don't have to say anything quickly. If you actually sit there in silence and purity of heart and actually listen to what's being said and asking questions, so that you can gain an understanding so that you're not taking it according to the way that you want to take it, but instead you're actually being a righteous judge and actually seeing all aspects of what they're saying so that you can form a correct uh, understanding. It'll keep you from being hasty. It'll keep you from being eager, right? So if you keep silence and purity of heart, you shall understand you shall understand how to hold fast the will of Allah. Keep silence with the purity of heart, and you're going to gain understanding how to hold fast to the will of Allah. Right? And to cast away the will of Belier. You're going to be able to cast away the will of the devil because you're not operating in haste. You're not quick to be angry. You're not fearful because you're slow. You're moving slower. You're gaining understanding. Now, let's talk about getting away from doubt because doubt is a major thing that causes people to go into anxiety. Okay, um, we're gonna read through this. Um, the Shepherd of Hermits, Mandate 9, Chapter 1, Verse 1. And we're going to read down to 9, Brother Casa. All right. Mandate 9, Chapter 1, Verse 1. He said to me, Remove from thyself a doubtful mind, and doubt not at all whether to ask of Allah Hayyam, saying within thyself, How can I ask things of the Lord and receive it, seeing that I have committed so many sins against him? Reason not thus, but turn to the Lord with thy whole heart, and ask of him nothing wavering, and thou shalt know his exceeding compassion, that he will surely not abandon thee, but will fulfill the petition of thy soul. For Allah is not as men who bear grudge, but himself is without malice, and hath compassion on his creatures. Just like we should, right? We should have that same compassion. As Allah Hayyam has compassion on his creatures, if we have that same compassion, we won't get into our feelings, right? We won't get into our feelings, any feeling that takes us away from the good, the good works of Allah Hayyam and lead us into anxiety. Go ahead, Brother Kasper. Verse 4. Do thou, therefore, cleanse thy heart from all the vanities of this life and from the things mentioned before, and ask of the Lord, and thou shalt receive all things, and shalt lack nothing of all thy petitions, if thou ask of the Lord nothing wavering. But if thou waver in thy heart, thou shalt surely receive none of thy petitions. For they that waver towards Allah, these are the doubtful-minded, and they never obtain any of their petitions. 
but they that are complete in the faith make all their petitions trusting in the Lord and they receive because they ask without wavering, nothing doubting. For every doubtful minded man, if he repent not, shall hardly be saved. Cleanse therefore thy heart from doubtful mindedness and put on faith, for it is strong, and trust Allah higher that thou wilt receive all thy petitions which thou askest. And if after asking anything of the Lord, thou receive thy petitions somewhat tardily, be not of doubtful mind, because thou didst not receive the petition of thy soul at once. For assuredly, it is by reason of some temptation or some transgression of which thou art ignorant, that thou receivest thy petition so tardily. Do thou therefore cease not to make thy soul's petition, and thou shalt receive it. But if thou grow weary and doubt as thou askest, blame thyself and not him that giveth unto thee. See to this doubtful mindedness, for it is evil and senseless, and it ruineth many from the faith. Yea, even very faithful and strong men. For indeed, this doubtful mindedness is a daughter of the devil, and worketh great wickedness against the servants of Allah. Hayyam. Therefore, despise doubtful mindedness, and gain the mastery over it in everything. Clothe thyself with faith, which is strong and powerful, for faith promiseth all things accomplisheth all things but doubtful mindedness as having no confidence in itself fails in all the works which it doeth all right so you can see how that doubtful mindedness plays against you and how that doubtful mindedness actually leadeth you into anxiety and all these other spirits that are associated with anxiety okay Okay, can you read Mandate 10 for me real quick, please? Sure. Shepherd of Hermes, Mandate 10, chapter 1, verse 1, and 2 and 2. All right. Chapter 1, verse 1. Put away sorrow from thyself, saith he, for she is the sister of doubtful mindedness and of angry temper. When the man of doubtful mind sets his hand to any action and fails in it, owing to his doubtful mindedness, grief at this entereth into the man and grieveth the Holy Spirit and crusheth it out. Yeah. All right. So you see how once you go into that doubt, right? And after that doubt comes and that angry temper comes, then you go into sorrow. And when the sorrow comes, it grieves the Holy Spirit and crusheth it out. So you can see where everything is going, right? That anxiety, and the Holy Spirit are odds for one another because the Holy Spirit is tranquil while anxiety is hasty and angry. So you can see that that spirit in itself keeps you away from the Holy Spirit. So we have to really see what's working against us and the end goal of what's working against us. Can we jump over to Shepherd Hermit's Mandate 5, chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, please? Sure. Chapter 2, verse 6. The delicate spirit, therefore, as not being accustomed to dwell with an evil spirit or with harshness, departed from a man of that kind, and seeketh to dwell with gentleness and tranquility. And then, when it hath removed from that man in whom it dwells, that man becometh emptied of the righteous spirit, and henceforward, being filled with the evil spirits, he is unstable in all his actions being dragged about hither and thither by the evil spirits and is altogether blinded and bereft of his good intent. Thus it happeneth to all persons of angry temper. But you see when that angry temper joins with that hastiness and with doubt or angry temper in itself and it joins with that anxiety, then you become unstable in everything. You're an unstable in all your actions and you're dragged about hither and thither by the evil spirits. You have no control. The spirits are controlling you. They're tossing you here. They're tossing you there. You can't control anything. And this is one reason why you have to have those limits or those boundaries and know them 
so that you can not be too happy, not be too sad. You can stay right there in that middle place. And also, these are the different things that are going to help you. This is why I'm, I'm bringing them back up. These are the different things that are going to help you so that you're not dragged hither and thither by the evil spirits. It's not being hasty, not being hasty to go into any emotion or any feeling, right? And by being silent, remember what we read a little bit earlier when it talked about being silent? We were in the Testament of Naphtali, chapter 3, verse 1. Because if you keep silent and purity of heart, you shall understand how to hold fast the will of Elohim and cast away the will of Belier. Now we're seeing the will of Belier, okay? The will of Belier is to be filled with evil spirits and to be unstable in all your actions and to be dragged about hither and thither by evil spirits and altogether blinded in the rift of your good intent. So you're altogether blinded. So you don't even understand that you're going the wrong direction when you're in these spirits. You can't control yourself. You're actually getting taken over. And you're not going to understand anything until you come out of it. While you're going through it, it makes so much sense until you get out of it because you actually fail or were given over to those spirits. And the, the will of Belier started operating in the midst of you. And this is when it starts getting very, very serious because no one wants to lose control. Okay, so let's gain control today so that we're not taken over, so that we can always have our hand in the midst of our own salvation, where we're not losing grips of our own salvation from these evil spirits. Anxiety in itself tries to hinder the person it's attacking not to be able to dwell with the Holy Spirit, all right? I'm going to read the Shepherd of Hermes, Mandate 10, Chapter 2, Verse 5 and 6. Then I'm going to jump over to Chapter 3, Verse 1 through 4. Uh, the Shepherd of Hermes, Mandate 10, Chapter 2, Verse 5. Put away, therefore, from thyself sadness, and afflict not the Holy Spirit that dwelleth in thee. Least happily she intercede with Elohim against thee and depart from thee. For the spirit of Elohim that was given unto this flesh endureth not sadness, neither constraint. So we have to stay away from that sadness. Remember that the, the doubtful mind and the anger leadeth us to sadness. All right? Now, Shepherd of Hermes, Mandate 10, chapter 3, verse 1. Therefore, now let's figure out what to do so that we don't go into that sadness, okay? Therefore, clothe thyself in cheerfulness. So we got to be joyful. We have to be cheerful, okay? We have to see everything from cheerfulness, okay? We can't see everything from sadness or from anger or from doubt. We actually have to keep our eyes steadfast upon cheerfulness, which have favor with Elohim always, and it's acceptable to him, and rejoice in it. For every cheerful man work is good, and think is good, and despise his sadness. For every cheerful man work is good. He work of good works. He's not unstable in all his works. And think is good. He thinks good. Okay? mindset he thinks good he thinks good thoughts amongst everybody he thinks good thoughts toward that person he thinks good thoughts toward that person he thinks good thoughts toward himself and despises his sadness he doesn't like to be sad okay a cheerful man doesn't like to be sad or a cheerful woman doesn't like to be sad we don't find there's no joy in sadness okay But the sad man is always committing sin. In the first place, he committeth sin because he grieveth the Holy Spirit, which was given to the man being a cheerful spirit. 
And in the second place, by grieving the Holy Spirit, he doeth lawlessness, and that he doeth not intercede with neither confess unto Allah. So you see that sadness leadeth you not to confess your faults. For the intercession of a sad man has never at any time power to ascend to the altar of Allah. So even Allah doesn't like sadness. Allah is very cheerful. Wherefore say I, do if not the intercession of him that is sad and ascend to the altar, because he saith, sadness is seated at his heart. The sadness mingled with the intercession do if not suffer the intercession to ascend pure to the altar. For as vinegar, when mingled with wine in the same vessel, have not the same pleasant taste, so likewise sadness mingled with the Holy Spirit hath not the same intercession. Therefore cleanse thyself from this wicked sadness, and thou shalt live unto Allah. Yea, and all they shall live unto Allah. Who shall cast away sadness from themselves and clothe themselves in all cheerfulness? All right, so we have to put that cheerfulness on, okay? If we really choose to serve Allah, we will be strengthened to overcome the spirit of anxiety, trusting in him and his care and deliverance for us. Uh, can we read First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, please? Sure. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of Allah, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now, these verses are so important, though they get overlooked, okay? First, you have to humble yourself. And the context of humbling yourself I'm referring to is actually humbling yourself to Allah and actually doing what he tells you to do. Doing what he tells you to do to overcome and actually putting forth the effort. And also humbling yourself to believe in him. Believe in his word, believe in his works. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of Allah, that he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourself and do what he asked you to do, so that in due time, he will pull you out. He's the one that's going to cause you to overcome anxiety. But you have to take steps in order for him to do that. You have to show forth your faith by doing what he asked you to do to overcome it. You have to cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. So instead of worrying about everything and taking everything into your own hands, you have to cast it upon him and allow him to take care of it. And the reason why he does that and the reason why he's going to do it is because he cares for you. He don't want to see you go through the struggle, but it's a decision that you have to make. Because if you choose to go through the struggle, can't no man stop you. So you have to make the decision, okay, Yache, Lord, I don't know. I trust you. I know you care for me. So let me cast all these things upon you because it's too much for me to carry and it's worrying me to death. Stop worrying. Stop trying to hold the weight of everything and understand many things need to be prayed about and left to Allah to deliver. Uh, can we read Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, please, Brother Costa? Sure. Matthew 11 and 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All right. He said, come unto him. This is our Donald. This is Yache. This is our Lord, our Savior. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. So you have all this weight upon you, right? You're laboring, you're working hard. You got all this weight on you from all the cares of the world, right? 
and he said he'll give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. So stop worrying about all the things that you're worried about and worry about the things that I want you to worry about. And learn of him. Learn who he is. Learn how he operates so that you too can operate the same. But he's meek and lowly in heart. And he said, what? And you shall find rest unto your souls by doing what he asked you to do. But my yoke is easy. So the things that he's asking you to do, it's easy. But the things that you're doing in your life right now are hard. Right? And my burden is light. His burden is light because he can handle the weight. Because he was made to handle the weight. We weren't made to handle that weight. We were made to follow him. Now, after going through our mindset changes and the things needed to overcome anxiety, let's understand what entity is responsible for anxiety so we can actually see where and how this demon actually operates against us. Uh, can we read the Testament of Solomon, chapter 43, Brother Kassifo? Okay. Um, I want to give you an understanding of the Testament of Solomon if you haven't heard of or read this book before. Uh, the Testament of Solomon, he was actually given dominion over the spirits, over the demons and the evil spirits of the world. And he would summon them to him. And they would have to give account of what they do and who they are so that we can understand how they operate. Okay. Testament of Solomon, chapter 43, please. Testament of Solomon, chapter 43. <laughs> but I, Solomon, glorified Ahaya and made another demon come before me. And there was brought to me a demon having all the limbs of a man, but without a head. And I, seeing him, said to him, tell me, who art thou? And he answered, I am a demon. So I said to him, which? And he answered me, I am called envy. For I delight to devour heads, being desirous to secure for myself a head. So but you I do. see why he attacks the head. He desires a head. He covets after one because he doesn't have one. So he attacks your head. He attacks your mind. All right. Go ahead, Brother Custom. But I do not eat enough, but am anxious to have such a head as thou hast. So he operates in the same spirit that he calls his people to operate in. He, he operates in anxiety as well so you can see how when that spirit enters into you you're operating just as the spirit operates go ahead brother Kasa. 44 i solomon on hearing this sealed him stretching out my hand against his chest whereon the demon leapt up and threw himself down and gave a groan saying woe is me where am i come to O oh, traitor or Nias, I cannot see. So I said to him, I am Solomon. Tell me then how thou dost manage to see. And he answered me, by means of my feelings. By means of I, what? By means of my feelings. So he's able to see based off of how he feels. And he's able to see you based off of how you feel. So when you get into these extreme emotions or you get into these feelings, you're actually lowering this spirit to you because that's the only way that he can see. Go ahead. Then I then, Solomon having heard his voice come up to me, asked him how he managed to speak. And he answered me, I owe King Solomon, am holy voice for i have inherited the voices of many men all right so he's able to speak <laughs> the more people that he overtakes the more he's able to speak he inherits the voices of men by taking over their minds he actually inherits it he actually takes it away from them and that's what he's trying to take from everyone 
he desires a head so much, he covets after it. So if he can take over your mind, then he's gained your voice because eventually you see the end goal in the far extremity or the extent of what he actually wants is to be able to take that mind from you where you have no control over it. And if you have no control over it, he does. So don't let him control your feelings. Don't let him control your voice. Grow in self-restraint, self-control, temperance, moderation, being slow to speak and slow to act in patience. Not allowing your feelings to control you, but instead allowing Elohim to guide your words and your actions. So good things in your heart, as we read in the Philippians 4 and 8. And evil and doubtful thoughts will diminish and leave you. We have to actually start thinking good. Thinking love toward one another. And not that hatred or anger or fear. All right. Brother Kasi, you got anything? Um, this was really good. Good understanding of the source of anxiety and how is the devil using it through the other spirits to give this demon place and seeing how the part with Naphtali of not being eager through covetousness to beguile our soul with vain words, like understanding the inner battle of taking my time, being silent with purity of heart so I can properly see things clearly, not getting in my feelings. And that will help me avoid serving Belier and his will through hastiness and acting fast to get sad or get doubtful or angry and then given envy a place to take me into a frenzy through hastiness. But if I sit there quietly and think it out without getting in my feelings, Allah will point me in the right direction and I'll be able to hold fast his will and stay calm instead of getting anxious about things. And that I, I thought it was amazing because that simplicity of understanding passes all understanding because it keeps me in the peace of Allah higher. As Paul was talking about, I thought that was amazing. It's very good edification. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we hope you too enjoyed the lesson. If you enjoyed the lesson, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you would, go and visit our website, www.hebrewreaders.com. If you have any questions or if you have any comments, you can write it down in the comment section or you can write us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. We love you guys. We hope everybody has a great day. And we thank you for your support. Shout out to the channel. Peace, everybody. Shout out to the channel.